the um Sorry, the Kickstarter. You're need to restart. I didn't have the audio on. Oh, okay. So, I'm gonna start. Okay. Yeah. So you can hear me now, maybe. Um, <clears throat> welcome to Brandon's live stream. Ah, uh, this is number ten. We are going to be signing tip-in pages for Rhythm of War. So these are from Tor. They're the exact paper that is used in the Stormlight Archive books, and I am going to be signing these, and they are going to be bound into the front of the book. Uh, we aren't sure if there's going to be a tour for this book because of COVID, so we're doing a big chunk of tip-in pages that are going to all your favorite bookstores, and then you can get signed editions. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to sign a bunch of these. How many of these do we have to sign? 8,000? Total, yeah, 8,000. 8,000. We're not going to do them all tonight. We are going to do 2,000 of them, theoretically, tonight. Um, and then... We will move on to all the other stuff we need to sign other nights. Uh, Adam's going to be reading me questions, um, and I'm going to be answering them. Isaac's going to be stopping by later to talk about the Way of Kings Kickstarter. We have giveaways, we have fan mail, um, and we have lots of fun things. So, Cool. Uh, well, this first one, c question comes from Evgeny. Evgeny! Um, hi, Evgeny. How you doing? And he is in the chat, too, so... Mm. Um, he says, when coming up with the powers of the metallic arts, was there a magical effect you wanted to include but couldn't for whatever reason? And what power would you have added if you could? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Um, so the one I most wanted to get was steel pushing and iron pulling. And that's the one that, like, the others are all based around um, the things that I thought a gang of thieves would use. And that's the one where I'm just like, this is cool. I'm going to make this work. Um, I'm going to fit it in. Uh, there weren't any powers that I really wanted that I couldn't fit in. Um, there are a lot of powers I considered um, and didn't get around to. Um, like, there is often a uh, disguise artist in a thieving crew. Um, but I knew light weaving was going to be a big part of the Cosmere. Um, even back then, I had written Dragonsteel, which had light weaving in it. Um, and I was contemplating, um, you know, using that in Stormlight, and I thought, eh, too much disguise illusion, too many uses of light weaving is just going to become a problem. Plus, the moment you add that to a story, uh, it does things to the story. From then on, it, uh, you have to be playing weird espionage games, which I like, uh, don't get me wrong, but it, it changes the tone of things when anyone can be wearing someone else's, could be someone wearing a different face. And so I just didn't put that into uh, the books. I did a little bit of that with the Contra in order to, to make a nod toward that, but I put some really strict requirements on it uh, so that I could use it in the second book the way that I did. Uh, the Contra were designed for this. They weren't in the original, I don't believe, um, version of Mistborn before I came up with uh, this story. Uh, this next one comes from Ian. They say, when will we see the American cover for Rhythm of War? Uh, once Michael is finished with it. Uh, today, I saw the color palette um, for it, which is you know the colors that, that he's going to be using, and I saw the sketches of the figures, which a sketch from Michael Whalen is like a finished product from someone else, um, but it is still only two-tone and um, just getting the poses right and things. So once he has painted it, we will show it to you. Uh, I don't know when that will be. Uh, it's really, it's up to Michael. Um, he is fantastic to work with, but uh, he is, you know, the best in the business. So we want to make sure we accommodate his time frame on these things. So Ryan wants to know if there are any Dark Souls Easter eggs in any of your books. Dark Souls Easter eggs. I don't think I put any Dark Souls Easter eggs in. Um, boy, um, maybe I should at some point. I don't think I've intentionally, like, I stay away from pop culture Easter eggs in the Cosmere books, uh, just because, you know, I do do Easter eggs, but they're usually, like, people that are my friends and my family and things like that. Um, I really, like, there's a bit of a fourth wall break that happens, not that I don't do it in some things, like, you know, the Krell are, um, are an Easter egg from Forbidden Planet. That, that word comes from that, which is one of my favorite uh, old school sci-fi movies and stuff. So I do things like this all the time, but I don't go into it thinking, I want to find an Easter egg to, to mention this. Um, so even stuff like where Wayne is reading a, a book about talking bunnies, people are like, ooh, it's an Easter egg reference to Watership Down. I don't really mean it to be that. I mean it to be that 
talking animal books are just a thing that happens in a lot of cultures and felt like it felt natural for this time frame. Um, there, it wasn't me even referencing. I try to stay away from references to our world, um, but I do it on occasion. So it's a, it's a very valid question. Um, and maybe there are some, some things I've done that I don't even remember doing. Um, Gunner wants to know if you have a favorite spren that you've written. Favorite spren? Uh, that's like asking who my favorite character is. Really, it's whoever I'm writing right now. Um, I try to make them all distinctive. That's my goal. Um, and have different voices, and uh, even among different spren of the same type of spren, I want them to, to sound and speak differently. Um, so I don't have any favorites. Uh, I try not to play favorites with my characters. Um, Emerald Isles uh, wants to know if there are any mythical or legendary stories or creatures that have influenced any of your stories. Oh, yeah. I mean, every everything I read about influences my stories. Um, you will ta find, you know, most... Um, I, I have a folklore background. Um, uh, my senior thesis was in folklore. And um, my, my senior course, not my senior thesis. My senior thesis was Dragon Steel. Um, but I, um, you'll find all kinds of Native American myths popping up um, as things that have inspired me. You'll find all kinds, of course, the, the, uh, the Greco-Roman myths. Uh, you'll find, I love the beasts um, in a lot of these mythologies. I love the Kraken. I love just all of this sort of stuff. So yeah, um, is there anything in specific um, that has influenced me? I don't know, like mostly, I try to take the things that I love and I try to break them down into why I love them and then rebuild them into something that fits the setting that I'm writing. Um, and so that's where the beasts and stormlight came from, for instance, and the things like mist raids and whatnot. Um, and it's not that there's like one specific inspiration, but more that liking folklore, liking different types of narratives and myths and stories and um, wanting to make my worlds feel real by using that knowledge is where most of this all comes from. Uh, Matthew Grady from Facebook um, wants to know, does a metal need to be swallowed to be burned or can it be injected or snorted? Uh, it could be either of those two things. In fact, we have, s yeah. So, yes. Um, basically, um, metal into the body in any way is going to work generally. Um, not even, there's nothing magical about the stomach, even though it works the best when we talk about it. Um, it's just more intermixing the, uh, the nature of the metal with your soul in the Cosmere, your, uh, your, uh, spiritual entity, um, is what gives them that ability. Um, and William Brown wants to know um, anything about the Leatherbound for Way of Kings. Nobody Way of Kings Leatherbound. Well, Isaac's Isaac. going to be stopping by, um, and so I'm going to defer until he gets here. That makes sense. Um, I just saw it pop up. Yep. We have a whole bunch of, like, we should be. I think Isaac has the whole breakdown of the costs of things um, today for the, we won't, we'll be, the Kickstarter's still like three weeks away. Yeah. Um, and so, but we want everyone to, to be, we're going to try to be very upfront about how things um, will be. And I think we'll have the breakdown of all the tiers for you guys today uh, to look at. And maybe even all of the add-ons, though the pricing on those isn't firm yet. Uh, I, uh, but I spoke to Isaac earlier and I think he's going to be bringing even a graphic for you to use that you can put up for them. Okay. Um, so. Um, and I do know that we're going to be sharing a link a little bit later on that yeah. actually shows a preview of the Kickstarter so they can see all this stuff laid out. Oh, as well. okay. Yeah, great. So That's that will we'll, we'll, we'll have all the information. Oh, we'll it won't have, have all, the, have all information. the information. Okay. Yeah. Never yeah. mind. It's like a thumbnail. It's like a thumbnail. Yeah. Never mind. We're Sorry, getting close. Hopes. We should Sorry. be doing a blog post <laughs> very soon with everything on it. Um, Probably next week. Yeah, the idea is next week. Um, I, I recorded my Kickstarter video today. Um, so you'll see me in the same outfit, uh, but standing in Isaac's office uh, recording my, uh, my introduction to the Kickstarter. Um, Udi Kumra um, says, a lot of your books have recurring social events. What do you think makes these scenes extremely fun to read, despite them really just being characters talking about the plot? Oh, yeah. Um, so this is a really tough thing to learn to write and to deal with. Um, and as a writer, at some point in your career, 
probably several points during your career, you're going to look at a chapter and you're going to say, this is just people sitting around talking. My entire book is just people sitting around talking. Nothing happens. And you might panic for a moment. Um, go watch some of your favorite movies and be reminded how much of your favorite movies are people standing around talking. Uh, the, one of your jobs as a writer is to make sure that people standing around talking is interesting. Um, and that is in some ways tough, but in some ways it's, it's the art of writing. Um, and usually, you know, books are divided between three basic things, dialogue, um, action and description that makes up your entire book. And they tend to be equally weighted, maybe not by exact page count, but in a lot of books. Some will skew one direction or another, for sure. Um, but the you're going to have scenes where you have to make things that are descriptions and things that are dialogue. You're going to want to make those highlights, right? Like one thing that uh, Peter, my editorial director, always says uh, that's very wise is he says, make sure that you understand why this scene might be someone's favorite scene in the book. Every scene you're writing, it doesn't have to be everyone's favorite, but understand why someone might conceivably pick this scene as their favorite. And if the scene is people sitting around, uh, you know, chatting, like my favorite scene in Age of Ultron, I just watched all of the Marvel movies again, showing them to my children. Favorite scene is probably this favorite scene of a lot of people, which is the characters sitting around chatting and trying to lift Thor's hammer, right? A uh, memorable scene. They put it in the trailer, I believe, because it was, it was so well written. Why in a movie full of action and peril and drama is my favorite scene that scene? Well, it's uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, shows a lot of character. Um, when you can write a really great scene of people talking about the plot, but what you're really doing, you're, you're on the surface, you are giving them a recap, right? But what you're really doing is you're digging down into each character's motivations. And when characters speak to each other is one of the best times for you to show how different those two characters are. Um, when, when Nat um, in that thing is like, nah, I don't need to try to lift that thing. It says so much about her that as a writer, you would have to, normally you would think, oh, I've got to spend pages to get this across. In a great dialogue scene, by contrasting, you can have her use one line of dialogue and say chapters worth of information about her. And, you know, when uh, Tony and Rhodey are trying to lift the thing using, you know, Iron Man powers and stuff, it's just a little bit of a, well, let's see if my powers are better than your powers sort of thing. It's so good. And then, you know, it bring, comes to a culmination. You have failure, failure, failure. And then you see the moment where Cap almost moves it and you s get to see uh, Thor be like, uh? Um, and so the scene has motion. It's just a dialogue scene, but it has motion. It has try-fail cycles. It has building and rising actions. It has a payoff with a little denouement um, right afterward where he doesn't lift it and Thor is so happy, right? Um, and that, when you can write dialogue sequences, I mean, that's what Joss is best at, right? Um, when you can write a dialogue sequence like that, that's why a dialogue sequence recapping the plot, even though that's not exactly what they're doing there, but you know, um, can be the thing that becomes someone's favorite scene in a movie or a book. Um, and that's what we practice. That's what we try to write. So if you're having trouble with this, ask yourself, what is the motion of this conversation? What is the rising action? What is, what is the contrast between the characters? They don't even have to be arguing. They can be, but even if they're not arguing, how is each of them manifesting their own uh, personality, their motives, and how is that different from everyone else's? And have something fun in the scene. Um, that scene wouldn't be nearly as much fun if they were just sitting around talking without the centerpiece being trying to move the hammer. So um, use that as a, as a masterclass on, uh, on how to write a, a boring dialogue scene in a way that becomes the best scene in the entire piece. Uh, Dame Brown from Facebook says, hypothetically, if Kelsier were to meet Kaladin, what would he say? If hy Kelsier were hypothetically to meet Kaladin, uh, probably don't be so hard on yourself, kid. Uh, that would probably be what Kelsier says. Um, 
a, he would do some version of, I've been there, don't be so hard on yourself. You, you, you can't, you know, you can't fix it all. Um, but um, that's, that's what my gut says. Uh, Kelsier would really like Kaladin. Um, he's the sort of person that Kelsier just, like, Kelsier loves to see and recognize the people who are just innately good and trying to do good. Um, he's drawn to that because it's not something that is natural to him, if that makes any sense. He can recognize it, though. Um, and he kind of, it's one of those things that he kind of wants to preserve in the world. And he would, he would really like Kaladin. Uh, so would Kaladin like Kelsier? Uh, probably not. Um, but, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, Kelsier would probably um, be just fine with that. <laughs> um, Raising Supergirl is looking for some tips on approaching Joshua, your agent, as he is taking submissions. Right Ooh, Joshua is open for subs. All right. So, um, over the years, I've gotten a decent perspective on Joshua and what he likes. Um, Joshua does not like people to uh, coddle him, for one thing. So if you're sending him a query, for instance, he doesn't want it to sound like a movie uh, trailer. It's one of the things that bothers him most. He wants you to be professional and frank and outline the whole story. He doesn't want you to keep back the twists and reveals. He wants you to include the twists and reveals. And he wants, um, it doesn't want to read like, what if a man were to, he just wants to read your passion into your story. Um, if you're uh, sending him chapters and things, Joshua does like action. Uh, Joshua's favorite sorts of things tend to be the more fast-paced. Like, um, he read the entire uh, Wheel of Time when I was working on it so that he could give feedback. The Wheel of Time is not a book series Joshua would have read um, just on his own. Too much description, too, mu too much, um, too slow-paced. Um, he likes... M more modern epic fantasies um, that uh, that tend to pace a little faster, but um, he he would say he would like anything that is well done. Uh, but you gotta have you gotta have good motion, and you gotta have characters that he gets and relates to. Um, he is an excellent agent. I highly recommend him. Uh, but that does seem to be where Joshua is. He himself doesn't skew literary. Um, some of the p other people that work at the company skew literary, and he doesn't skew YA either. There are other people that skew YA. Joshua, like the things he likes, um, like John Henry's uh, Lost Fleet stuff, are just perfect Joshua books. He really likes those books, and he, um, you know, he really likes, uh, yeah, um, there you go. Uh, that's, that's what I can say about Joshua. Uh, he does post on his blog once, he used to. I don't think he actually does anymore. But he used to kind of talk about these sorts of things. Sometime we should make him come out here and be on a live stream with me. Um, and then we, you can ask Joshua, Joshua, what would you recommend for people submitting to you? Uh, do know that Joshua um, very much is one of these old school agents who likes to take on an author kind of as like to see their potential and help them reach it and then sell them. Um, and he often rejects, um, or rejects is the wrong term. He doesn't agree to pick someone up until sometimes he has seen what they can do in a vision. Some people do not want this in an agent. Uh, someone who, you know, work, who wants to work with the author and work like a second editor. Uh, Joshua very much likes this. He's very good at it. Um, he is as good as or better than, uh, than the editors that I have on projects. But for instance, he didn't take me on until he saw that I could take feedback and revise. And that adds to the process. And it means you're revising for someone who may not even pick you up and, uh, represent you. And some people, um, uh, caution against that in the field. And I think they are wise to listen to, even though I think there is an argument for having an agent who is more involved in the editorial process. And I just want to say hi to Shad. Oh, Shad here? The, yeah. Ooh. Shad's been uh, reading uh, Rhythm of War lately. Uh, Shad, I just uh, I just got done with the, with the uh, revising the scene in part one that involves the, uh, the let's just say, a fan of swords. Um, and I found your comments uh, hilarious and very helpful. Uh, so um, there we are. 
Perfect. Mm -hmm. um, Ken uh, is hoping that you can talk about your influence for Steris and how you went about doing research necessary for her character in regards to her being on the spectrum and basically what that process was like. So um, Steris started where with me in part um, realizing that I had done a very Hollywood version of... Um, of autism um, in Elantris um, because, you know, I just wasn't as good at research and looking to primary sources back then. Um, and so for a long time that stuck in my head and started to just kind of itch at me and I said, I want to do a better version of this. Um, but um, that was only part, like, I, one of the things when I'm building a character, one of my kind of go-to things is try to make sure that a given character is not solely defined by one thing, particularly not, you know, the way that they see the world. Either, um, you know, their, um, their m things like autism, right? Like, I work very hard to make it so that Kaladin is not defined by his depression. Kaladin is a protagonist who has depression. Depression is not Kaladin's main challenge, right? Kaladin is, deal is dealing with survivor's guilt and his desire to protect people against his really, how great he is at killing people, right? Like this is the main core conflict in Kaladin is I'm really good at killing people. I was trained to be a surgeon and I actually was really good at that. Is there a middle ground? Um, and that is the core crux of who Kaladin is. Likewise with Steris, I didn't want to be, here is a person with autism. Let's talk about autism. It was, here is a character. And um, as I wrote and worked with her, it felt right, if that makes sense. Uh, I remember one of the things that really inspired me for Steris um, is actually Karen Alstrom, who is, um, is, um, is my continuity editor. And we should have Karen on sometime to answer questions. But uh, Karen once was at a uh, writing group talking about how um, she, she loves characters who are like her, who always are ready to have, you know, the person who saves that scrap, like people call them hoarders. And in her head, she's like, no, no, no. A hoarder is someone who doesn't know what they have or why they have it. I have this thing that I have saved because I know I'm going to need it someday. And someone's going to say, man, I wish I had a cape for a seven-year-old that would go with this costume. And Karen is the person that says, I've got one of those. Here, let me get it for you. Uh, Karen just loves being prepared to help people. And I thought, that is a brilliant and amazing character attribute to give to a character. Um, the, the kind of Boy Scout be prepared, but more in a, I am ready to help. I do the research, I find out what people need, and I am ready there with it. Um, maybe a little too much. And that really melded together with how I was seeing her personality. Uh, she is based partially on a friend of mine who, ha um, who um, when I first met um, this friend, I'm not sure if I've said the name or not, so I'll just, um, it was very off-putting at first, getting to know them. Um, what we took for being stuck up was really just them being a little socially awkward, like most of us in this community are. But the way a lot of us express it is through being kind of goofy. And um, this person expressed it through being a little bit aloof, which when we got to know this person, we're like, wow, this is one of the most amazing people we've ever known. Um, but very hard to get to know them because mostly of us, right? Our own prejudices against people who are a little more quiet um, and things like that. And so um, I put that into Steris. And then how do I do research? Um, I go to primary sources. Uh, you've heard me say this before. But basically, I go read blogs. Um, I go watch videos. I watch interviews. Um, I listen to as much I can people talking about the way they see the world, the way they feel the world misunderstands them, um, and the way they would like to be perceived. Um, and that is just my go-to. I am fortunate in that I do know several people on the autism spectrum, um, and I've Really, I don't wouldn't say I understand what it is to live with autism, but I have a much better understanding than I did in 1998 when I wrote Elantris. Um, and these were all things that were mixing together. And when Steris, I started writing her, I'm like, this character just works. And it wasn't any one of those pieces that made her work. It was all of them together. 
Um, so, um, Isaac, um, maybe we'll have you come on once I finish this stack. Does that make sense? Sounds good. Um, he's over there getting ready and preparing. Do you have the anything for um, Adam to get ready to show on the stream, or are we I not doing that? Okay, I will okay. So, look at my email. We'll let them do that. Earlier. So. Um, you can pass me a question, and then you can... Yeah, this I really enjoyed this question. Let's hope that it can be answered. Okay. Um, this is from Andrew. He says, Had the Stormfather sent visions to Yasna instead of Dalinar, how would that have changed her? Um, so, um, that's an excellent question. Um, I think that Yasna and uh, the Stormfather um, would not be a terribly great match. Um, uh, but I think... Her coming to understand a very powerful spren, um, like the Stormfather, and seeing all of this, I think it would have uh, really helped Yasna build her philosophy of life. Um, because what's going on in the Cosmere um, is that the gods are lowercase g gods, right? Um, and this is a really fascinating thing that I like when fantasy deals with. I'm certainly not the only one. But... Um, at what point do you worship a being who is pretty flawed, but super powerful and able to help you in your life? And what kind of worship is that, right? Um, there's like a level between, um, uh, I don't know, atheism and theism in places in fantasy works where it's like, we can see that someone legitimately has supernatural powers um, and following that person makes some logical sense. Um, and this is sort of the thing, but does that make them God? Um, certainly not as the church teaches, where there is a perfect being who is, um, who is concerned with the lives of people and doesn't make mistakes. Um, and so I think Yasna would have arrived at some of the conclusions that she made probably faster if she had had um, these visions to see the past um, that she would have known some things that she was suspicious of and hoped would be the case. She probably could have getten, gotten to Urethiru or Urethiru much faster. Um, she could have, um, it would have made a big difference in a lot of different ways, um, but it was not a good match, uh, let's say. Um, it's, it's, she was not the person the Stormfather was looking for. Uh, for these sorts of things, um, you know, to continue the legacy of honor and things like this. Uh, so, did you, uh, can, are you able to mute um, that microphone when oh, you guys are whispering over there? It shouldn't be picking up so much. Yeah, <laughs> um, I just imagine that it's going to, it could be very distracting. Yeah. Um, let me give you another question. Mm -hmm. um, since we're still trying to get this sorted. Um, Gatlin says, in the past you talked about how your emotions generally tend to be more steady or subdued than the average person. Has there ever been a scene or a piece of work that after completing it made you feel like a 10 on the emotional scale? Um, yeah. So what are some 10s for me on the emotional scale? Um, so it's different for ones I'm writing versus ones I'm experiencing. Anytime a movie... Uh, or book can really excellently align um, a character arc with a plot arc. Um, it gets me right. Like any time that happens, even if it's if it's sappy, sappiness doesn't usually affect me anyway. But if you can do that, like if it's a character moment um, in a film where everything is coming together, um, I've mentioned probably my favorite scene in all of cinema. Maybe is when Gandalf crests uh, the rise. Um, in the two towers, right? And that is a 10 out of 10 emotional moment for me every time I watch that movie um, because it is so brilliantly paced, so brilliantly put together, and so beautifully shot. Uh, the narrative, uh, the, the character, you know, um, where Aragorn is basically at his, um, is emotionally wrung out um, and has been trying so hard to help these people who aren't listening to what they should be doing. Um, and um, they've held out so well for those five days and then Gandalf cresting the rise and then the light coming down behind him uh, to stop the pike wall. It's just so beautiful. Um, 
And that's one I get from the movie, not as much from the book. Uh, the visuals and the, the music add a ton to, for me. Um, but 10 out of 10 is for me. Most, I am looking for most of the books that I write to, to register pretty high on that scale at emotional moments at the end. Um, if they don't, um, that's fine. There are some books that don't, but most Sander Lanches, that's what I'm shooting for, is trying to get those moments to, to work. Um, and so I'm not sure if I can pick to point to any one specific one, but maybe Words of Radiance um, right near the end of that one before the, any climactic fights are happening. Um, you might know the one I'm talking to, but I don't want to spoil, or talking about it, but I don't want to spoil things. So, we're good. We have all the images if you want okay. to jump on. Okay, let's, uh, let's finish the stack. Oh, stack, yep, yep sorry. Finish the stack. Brain going then... too many different places. Yep. Um, this next one is from Roger. He mm -hmm. says, as I understand it, red is a sign of corruption in the Cosmere. I just reread The Emperor's Soul, and it mentioned wisps of red smoke when Shai tests the soul stamps. Does this mean she is corrupting Gautana's soul? Yes, um, that is what that means. Corruption doesn't have to have the negative connotation, right? Uh, basically, it means an outside influence is changing the spiritual nature um, of the, the soul. Um, and yeah, that's exactly what is happening right there. Um, now, we would call that, I would call that um, a pretty good thing. But, uh, you know... Um, they like all of those things where she is playing with someone's soul and changing it and changing their past and things like this. This is uh, by Cosby's definition, uh, corrupting someone's soul. Um, it's ex yep, expressly what it is. Um, and we actually have a question from Shad. Mm. He says, I know I could ask this directly, but mm. it would be fun for the stream. Okay. Will there be a great sword? And in parentheses, it says Montanta style. I probably mm -hmm. butchered that pronunciation. In, in Stormlight 4, or does the long sword still get all the love? Uh, I am probably changing that. So the scene I rewrote today, there was a great sword added to. So, um, so you can look forward to. I'm going to try it out. It's possible that I'll have to that I'll that I'll, I'll trim it out. But um, I'm going with it for now. Uh, I thought you made some very good arguments along those lines. So, um, and for those wondering, most of Shad's arguments are along the lines of, wouldn't this be awesome? Um, and uh, he, uh, he sees things the same way I do in a lot of ways of, let's, let's do what's cool uh, and then fig make it work. So, uh, And Rachel from the chat says, if Earth had two or three shards, what would they be? Oh, if Earth had shards? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Corona probably would be <laughs> no, Yeah. Um, boy. Uh, uh, that is not something that I feel confident answering right now. Uh, so let's raffle that one. Cool. Maybe I'll think cool. about it. Um, but uh, I honestly don't know. Maybe waffle, watch and find out. Watch and find out. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um, not me. Uh, says, as a white author whose books occasionally touch on issues of class, gender, and race, how has your approach on writing those changed? Is there anything in your older stuff that you wish you could have approached differently given what you know now? Yes, generally everything, right? Uh, the more you progress as a writer, um, uh, not just in this, on this um, direction, but just in general, the more you worry about things. But I already brought up how um, I felt like I treated autism poorly. And I would say that, um, you know, race and gender relations and things like that, like these are, these are not things I ever wanted to shy away from. Um, these are things that I wanted to deal with in my stories, um, class and privilege and all of this stuff. Um, but the danger in doing that is all of us are on uh, a journey where we are understanding things, I hope, more and more every day. Which means that the further you get away from that picture of who you were when you wrote those stories, um, the more you would do differently right now. Um, you have to be okay letting those things be a snapshot of who you were at the time um, and, uh, and moving forward. Um, but um, uh, I'm just so thankful and grateful for the resources we have now that so many people um, are writing um, and having blogs and talking about depictions in media um, and things like this 
I am very thankful to um, the beta readers we have uh, who are um, there to help make sure that I'm not accidentally hurtful when I'm trying to be helpful, which is a real danger. Um, you know, uh, so, so yeah, um, that list of beta readers in the front of my book, I do a lot of work on the books based on beta reader feedback. And I know there might be some people out there that that worries. They're like, oh, I want to see the uncompromised vision of the author. That's not how I work. Um, I work with test audiences. I work by writing something and Every time a beta reader reads some of my work and gives feedback, I understand a little better how to make my vision appear on the page. Most of what happens with the beta readers is me having misinterpreted what will work on the page just in slight little ways. Even 20 years later after starting my career, I will find out that something I've written just didn't work. And I would never, I think that, um, I don't know how, most authors do it without the large beta reads. I know that I would get that feedback after the book were at, was out and be like, ah, I didn't, I wanted th this to be different from this. Like, um, for, for a very clear uh, example, like um, the, the stuff about, uh, about dissociative identity disorder, right? We had a beta reader who really could step me through helping with some of these things um, in Rhythm of War, and the book is so much better because of it. Not just more accurate, but the book reads better. Uh, people who had no problem with the chapters before read them now and are like, wow, this is way better. Why is this way better? It's because I have had um, some insight that helps me understand the world and my characters better. Um, and so, anyway, uh, beta readers, very helpful in that. But the, the, the answer to your question is yes, there are lots of things I wish I could change. Just I've said before, I wish that um, there were more women on the team in uh, Mistborn. Um, not that every book needs, like I have, I'm not trying to judge anyone else's books, but when I went into Mistborn, I'm like, I'm going to make this a book about a young woman. Um, I, like that was one of the express things that I decided is I've read a whole ton of heroes journeys about, uh, about young boys, which I like and they're great books. Um, I want to do this character different, um, but I was so focused tunnel vision on her that I let a lot of the other team just default to male. And I did that when, if I had thought about it, I probably wouldn't have wanted to do that. Uh, would have just been made more sense and made a stronger book of the variety I was trying to write if I would have not had that tunnel vision. Um, and you know, one of the things I expressly wanted to show in this is that in a fantasy world, when you add... Uh, magical powers and things like this, um, you then can put a woman like Vin, who is short and slight of frame, um, without a lot of upper body strength, into a fight with someone much stronger, and you know what? She can win, um, which would be very difficult in a real world setting. That's one of the things I love about fantasy. Um, Sophia uh, mm -hmm. asks a related question to what you were just talking mm -hmm. about. Uh, they say you mentioned previously that you regret making Vin the only white, uh, the only woman in Kelsier's crew. Is that something you're planning to change in the Mistborn screenplay? It is. I actually already did it. Um, and so both uh, Docs and Ham are female in the screenplay. Um, and it actually Ham in particular works really well as a woman because um, one of the things that I wanted to do was kind of play with uh, Vin's conceptions of how a thieving crew works because she's worked in bad ones and not understanding how a great team can work. And so I um, have a great scene where she misinterprets everybody's job in the crew from glancing at them, making a quick judgment and saying, well, this person's this, this person's this. And the, you know, the only one she gets right is Spook um, because the uh, it works so well. Like in the book, I can take pages and pages to show you this is how this crew is different um, from ones you might have read and ones that, um, that, uh, that, that Vin has been part of. Um, and in this movie, you need, to, you need to have scenes do a lot of of heavy duty lifting all, um, you know, many multiple things at the same time. And so in this scene, Vin can do that. And then we 
understand her judgment of why she said all these things. And then Kelsey can be like, no, you know, that's that right there is our thug pointing at Dachshund, who is now, um, you know, a uh, a shorter woman. And with the powers of Allomancy, doesn't matter. Um, and it becomes kind of a big moment both for the audience and for Vin to understand things are different here. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. I do have to warn you, there isn't a lot of time in the screenplay for the crew. Uh, that's the thing. If I'm going to do this as a film, which it's not set in stone, it's possible that I'll move uh, to a show. But right now what I'm planning is film, television show for Well Ascension film, right? Um, which means that mostly in the first film, it is focused on Vin, Kelsier, CZ, um, and uh, Ellen, right? Like that's got to that's got to be the core of our film. Um, with you know, Shan as an antagonist, um, and um, that's the movie. Um, and I can't spend as much time with each of the crew members like I did. But what we can do is we can then move into Well of Ascension as a show. And with that being a show, really show the crew and the things they're doing um, and kind of write um, a heist with the crew where the crew is trying to heist keeping the kingdom in, um, from collapsing, right? Uh, write that like a thieving crew has been put in charge of a city. Let's see if they can keep this empire going. Uh, and I think that will work really well in television show format. Um, and that's where we can get into some of the things with Oresur and Tensoon and uh, character arcs for some of the from for some of the crew members and really get to know Ham and Breeze and everybody. Um, but anyway, that's that's what that's the big cost by doing it a film. That's the thing you're going to have to get uh, um, understand as it becomes really Vin and Kelsier's story. Um, and I think it's going to work. Um, I think it is uh, it is great. But if it doesn't, we do have the option of just doing a television show, um, which I know a lot of you would rather see. I just see Mistborn as a film, and, and so I've always seen it as a feature film, and so I'm hoping I can make it work. Um, I'm, uh, I think I'm about ready, Isaac. Um, we are getting close uh, to finishing this stack here. So let's pause the questions for a minute. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna social distance. You're supposed to stay on that corner, um, for social okay. distancing purposes. Perfect. And you have a separate camera on you. Um, so Sounds that, funny. um, yeah. So that we have a little bit of space between us. Sounds good. Um, so maybe I'll go grab my, we're trying to be good role models here. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that works. Mm -hmm. Should I uh, grab uh, my computer so I can look at these two? I only had printed uh, off one. You only printed off one. Okay. Yeah. Um, then, um, uh, yeah, why don't you do that so that okay. I have uh, talking points also. And All I'll right. just finish off these last few here. Okay. okay. Well, uh, let's give you another question. Um, mm -hmm. Pedio says the Bulgarian cover for Rhythm of War is a result of a contest. Yep. And all of the entries look fantastic. Yep. Despite how great Michael Whalen's covers are, would you ever consider such a contest for an American Stormlight Archive edition? If not Stormlight, maybe any other series? Yeah, it would be very hard for me to not have a Michael Whalen cover. Uh, you guys know me and Michael Whalen stuff for Stormlight Archive. For anything else, I could imagine that happening. Um, thing about it is that, um, like, in a market as big as the United States, um, like it seems like it would be a tougher sell both to the marketing department um, and to an extent it's a little bit, not insulting, but you know, I mean, imagine being you're an artist who's worked their whole life and then we're like, yeah, we're gonna open this to a contest to people instead. Um, just doesn't work the same way. So I would be hard pressed to imagine that happening in the States. There are so many fantastic illustrators um, earning, you know, their livings doing these covers um, that asking people to submit free covers. Like it works in Bulgaria because they have a very small print run, right? Like they are a small country. They do a thousand copies of a lot of the things and uh, they engage the fan community um, and I think it's wonderful and I think it's delightful uh, what what they did and I was fully approving of it But it just doesn't feel like the right thing to do um, Here where we have a huge budget, right? Like that's the difference 
Um, like in Bulgaria, they can't pay very much for a cover. I mean, they don't pay very, me very much for the books. That's okay. That's, but here, you know, we have an actual art budget. Um, and that's what employs professional writers or professional artists. A lot of them, that's where they earn their living. So um, I'm going to put this over here, grab a new one. And then Isaac has these things and I am done with a Sharpie that I have thrown on the floor already, I believe. So, um, all right. So Kickstarter guys. So I'm going to bring you up to speed and then hand it over to Isaac. Uh, for any who are confused or uncertain that this is the first they've heard of it. Um, we have been doing leather bound copies of my books for a number of years now. These are published in house by me and my team. Uh, they are something I always wanted to do that the publishers in New York were like, it's just not in our wheelhouse, uh, but we'll let you do them yourself if you want to. Um, when it got to Stormlight, uh, we wanted to do something different. Um, we wanted to be offering all kinds of goodies, like in a goodie bag that comes along with ordering the book. We wanted to do um, just a level up sort of thing. And we realized all the stuff that we wanted to do was gonna be really hard to track without using someone else's platform, someone else's structure. And so we went to Kickstarter. Um, and we have loved how easy it has made us to track all of these things. Um, and we are really excited. We're gonna be doing it um, in, uh, in July. Isaac will talk more about that. But this is for the leather bound edition um, of The Way of Kings, uh, which will come in two volumes. Uh, because it is so big. Um, and Isaac, go ahead. Why don't you talk about it? Are we putting yeah. up the, um, the graphic yet? Yeah. Or are you gonna... Let me know when you want me to yeah. yeah. So, so uh, we're printing out the rest of this. Kara might drop this in for mm -hmm. me. Yours go front and back for some okay. reason. Just okay. FYI. Oh, I got it. Yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah. The first thing here is our project has been approved uh, through Kickstarter, which means we are a go and we can an announce today kind of as our soft announcement. Um, that it will, and, and you can put up that, the first graphic, you, you got that up there. Okay, mm -hmm. it's gonna go from Thursday, July 7th at 9 a.m. Mountain Time, Mountain Daylight Time, um, and it will end Friday, August 7th at 3 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, and we'll, we'll put all of this information in a blog post that will probably go out sometime next week. Um, that way you can see more of this, we'll explain some of the things a bit more, we'll have more images and things. Yeah. Um, so save the date um, Adam will put a graphic up there and Adam is also going to post a link somewhere. Um, the when... moderators are posting the links. Okay. Okay. Moderators will be. And do... if you're watching this later, I'll put a link in the uh, description. Okay. And on that day, July 7th is when we're going to release Way of Kings Prime uh, for free. Yep. Um, this was originally going to be one of our stretch goals. Um, we, uh, we talked it over. We mentioned it earlier on streams. This has been a weird year. We've been playing this Kickstarter for about a year and a half now. Um, and we picked an interesting year to have our Kickstarter. Um, a year when um, a lot of people are having rough financial times and lots of other really emotionally charged things. And so we just thought, man, uh, we understand um, not everyone's going to be able to pay for or want to you know, pay for a large, expensive leather bound right now. So that's why we thought, well, we'll move this out of one of the stretch goals and we'll just give it away to everyone. Uh, that way everyone can participate. Um, and uh, so on that day, it's just gonna go live on my website. Uh, we'll link it on the Kickstarter, but just be on my website. You can download it. Way of Kings Prime, if you're not aware what it is. I wrote a version of the Way of Kings in 2007. Um, this version is weird. It's gonna be really weird to you. Uh, Bridge Four isn't in the book. Spren are barely in the book. Uh, you you get some hints of what I was where I was going with them. Um, the characters' names are all different. They're kind of the same people, but really not. Um, it follows the story of um, a young man, uh, Marin, who became Kaladin, um, who wins a shard blade um, in chapter one, and then trains to be a shard bearer in um, in the kingdom. Um, there is Knights Radiant, you know, there are hints of that I was going there, but it doesn't really even happen in this book. It's a completely different story. It's about, you know, being elevated to be nobility when you've lived your whole life, um, uh, as a non-nobleman and what that is like. And that's his story, but it's one of 
only a few large stories because it's also following Tom, the person who in this book has come back as a herald to warn of uh, coming danger, but no one believes him. It's about Yasna, who interacts a lot with Tom and uh, being pressured by society toward marriage when she doesn't want to be. Um, it has uh, Teravangian under a different name, whose name I can't even remember now, um, trying to take over his kingdom. Um, it has Zeph, who's called Jack, um, and, um, and on a completely different uh, story. It has a version of Shalom that's very different. Uh, the point, I don't consider them even the same characters. Uh, being part of an arranged marriage, um, not to anyone you've met, uh, or not to anyone you're expecting. How about that? Um, it is just bonkers different. Um, uh, like, Renarin creates the diagram in this book. Um, like, it is... So, anyway, um, we're releasing that for free. Imagine it as a weird, what-if, alternate dimension uh, version of The Way of Kings. Uh, I wrote it over from scratch very differently uh, for the 2010 uh, version. So we're just going to give that out to everybody for free. Um, you can just go pick that up and read it. Um, so you say the moderators are point posting that link? Yeah, I've seen the links. Okay, great. So, so that link, what that is, it's a preview page um, for the Kickstarter. And you will be able to um, go there, sign up for Kickstarter, and you can click a button there that will say, Remind me when this project goes live. Yep. Um, if you want to go do that right now, and we'll have instructions for that when we do the blog post next week yep. as well. Um, so let's uh, let's do a cool reveal. I think let's reveal kind of our mock-up for what the Wave Kings Leatherbound is going to look like in two volumes. Is that this um, picture? What, yep. Oh. It's it's going to be that picture okay, right cool. there. But mm -hmm. it's yeah. We've got a we've got some talking points here so that that I don't go off script and start talking about bananas or something. <laughs> Isaac has a, uh, Isaac, sometimes uh, both of us are very good <laughs> at going off topic. Right. Yeah. If anyone's watched these streams before, <laughs> a question will be asked and then suddenly we'll be talking about like when I went on a blind date for the first time with Emily with Isaac introducing me. Yeah. That was mm -hmm. a fun night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So. That image is up. Uh, this is just a mock-up. We do not have copies of this yet. We will have some at some point from the bindery, and we will post pictures of that during the Kickstarter if we get those. Um, and we're in this for the long haul. A lot of things are being produced at different times before, during, and after the Kickstarter. Um, and as we get some of those things in, if they happen to come in, we will post pictures and updates during the, the Kickstarter itself. So um, the design here has um, what you're seeing is bonded leather with uh, the two volumes. Like we said, we can't bind this in a way that makes it feasible in leather bound because we want them to be quality. And at a certain point, we can't point, bind them together as one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because you'd have to make the print smaller. You have to, um, it becomes bigger. You open it up, it breaks the binding a bit more. So we, we went for legibility. Um, and we hope it'll be a, a nice set for you. So gold foil on the front, not, not actual 14 karat gold or anything like that, but gold colored foil and blue foil as well with the, uh, you'll see the um, Windrunner glyph. It's gonna glyph. look so nice. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited for it. On the back, we don't have a picture of this uh, yet, but on the back um, of volume one, it says, speak again the ancient oaths. And then on the back of the, the second volume, it has the first oath of the Knight's Radiant, life before death, strength before weakness, journey before destination. Um, the, uh, the design will stay the same as we do these different leather bounds. The thing that will change is the glyph. Yeah. Um, we will do them all in blue is what we decided. Yeah. We thought it would look too weird if we did them all. You'd have this rainbow of weird of books, but we changed the glyph color yep. um, for each one. Uh, and we, that was our concession. We had to decide. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe audience feedback would change us on that, but I feel like if I were collecting these, I would want them all in that nice uh, colon blue yeah. um, with a different glyph on the cover. Yeah, it's it's kind of a really cool stormy blue mm -hmm. color. It feels good for Stormlight Archive. Um, we've I've already gone and looked at the foils for all 10 books and decided whether they would look good whether on, would clash. on yeah. the blue. Mm -hmm. um, the, the only place that we might get into issues is when we're doing Dalinar's book, Oathbringer, yeah. where it's already gold. That one might just be entirely gold. Yeah. Um, so, but we'll get to those things down the road. Um, hopefully you like it. 
Um, it was a lot of fun to design. We, um, when the Kickstarter video goes up, we will have a few images of me designing the, uh, the cover for this, um, which might be kind of fun mm. um, if it fits into the video. So, uh, Kickstarter. Yeah, talked a little bit about why we we're doing mm -hmm. Kickstarter. Yeah, go the, ahead. So, mm. so the one of the big reasons we're doing this is it's a celebration. It's been ten years since the Stormlight Archive was started, published wise. Right, ten years ago, the Wave Kings came out. I we feel like that's something that we want to mark. Um, so it happened to be that we're going to do the leather bound at this time too, and so we're turning this into a, a big online celebration, online release party for the leather bound. Um, so one of the reasons we decided to do this was because the leather bound book, we're splitting it into two copies. It's going to cost more. We wanted to, to compensate you for that in, in a way. Um, so throughout the Kickstarter, as we unlock stretch goals, and we'll talk about that a bit more, you get more things for the same price. Um, the leather bound is going to be $200. Um, it's twice the the cost of the previous ones, but we want to make it nicer. Yeah, we uh, that was the thing we we're really worried about. We're like, can we keep it at two hundred dollars? And we've yeah. managed to do that, um, and I'm very pleased by that. Uh, from the reaction we got from you guys, is that that's about that's the price point we wanted. That was the the right price point, um, and we've been able to bring it in at that price. Yeah, and uh, if you buy it during the Kickstarter, you're going to get a bunch of other goodies yeah. too that mm -hmm. won't be. They will be, if they're available in the store later on, they'll be available separately. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of like when you go to a book signing and you get a goodie bag and there's all sorts of fun stickers and things in it. This is our way of kind of giving a goodie bag at the, uh, at the book signing. Um, all right. So why don't we just talk about the different yeah, let's tiers? let's talk about the different tiers. So um, there's images for this as well, Adam. So each time we talk about a tier, you can just go to the, yeah, the we'll next hold image. On the and you guys talk about yeah. One about of my big points going on starting when I spoke to Izzy is I like I want I want a non I want some non two hundred dollar tiers. Yeah. I want some tiers for people who uh, love Stormlight <clears throat> but are like I don't want a two hundred dollar book. Um, I you know yeah. um, I could totally see that. Um, and so one of the things I wanted to do is uh, to have a Stormlight novella in between each. Um, uh, of the books, I'll someday go back and get one between one and two, uh, like we had um, with the with uh, Edge Dancer between two and three. And so I'm working on one. I've written a few scenes of it um, to go between uh, three and four that, that actually um, answers some questions you'll have while reading four. Um, and we thought we can combine these with the Kickstarter to give something that's a a little more um, of a a reasonable price for those people who are used to, yeah, who, who want to participate, but don't want to spend 200 bucks. Yeah. So tier one? Tier one. Mm -hmm. Tier one has to do with that novella. Yep. So um, we, the, for this tier, 10 bucks, you get the new Stormlight ebook. Um, and we wanted to add a little bit more to it than just the ebook. Mm -hmm. um, so as we, un well, first off, you get a bridge four wallpaper. You've, we've, you've probably seen the Bridge Four Wall uh, poster that we released a, a little while ago. We haven't released the physical versions of it, but we have shown everybody what it looks like. Um, so this tier comes with the Stormlight novella and what we're calling the digital art package. These are 1920 by 1080 wallpapers that you can use on your computer or on your phone as um, yeah, as a wallpaper. Are we gonna give one that's phone sized automatically or are we gonna have them resize it? Um, I will just, we're gonna make it so here, here's one in landscape view, yeah, here's one in phone view. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And there, the, the bridge four one, since there's several images there, there might be you know, four, uh, two to four different versions of that that you yeah. can pick from in this mm -hmm. art package. And we'll get to the stretch goals later, but each time that we unlock a stretch goal, we will add um, digital a digital rewards. version um, of most of those. There's yeah. some that we won't like yeah. um, that that talk about upgrading the book itself, the yeah. physical print. But you know, if we if we add on some cool goodie that someone's getting, you'll get an art version of that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you don't have to get anything mailed to you. Mm -hmm. um, if you live where shipping is expensive, you can just buy this. And we've already released Wave Kings Prime digitally, so you can you can download that. Um, and then, yeah, 
Boom. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this will happen at some point after the Kickstarter when you're done writing it and we're yeah. done producing the book. Um, so yeah, this mo our goal is that most of the stuff arrives by the end of the year. Yeah. But we don't know exactly when things are going to come in and whatnot. Uh, I'll write, be writing the novella probably in November and August. And then when it's done, gone through beta reads and revisions, we'll send it out to people. Yeah. And the, uh, the, the print version will come after that just because yeah. we need longer schedules yep. to get things printed, especially with all of the things happening this year. It makes uh, printing books a little bit um, a little yeah. bit longer. Uh, so we're on to tier two then. Tier you mentioned two. The print. Yep. So tier two, what we're adding here is the uh, print version of the novella, um, which I was just talking about. So this comes with, a, it's 50 bucks, comes with a the Stormlight novella mm -hmm. itself and the ebook, so physical. These are going to be the same size as the the lift hard yep. mini hardcovers that you've probably yep, seen. Yep, it's a in mini hardcover that should should look really nice on the shelf next to it. Yep. Um, this comes with a physical copy of the Bridge Four poster, which is enormous. Um, it's the same size as movie posters that you would see going to the movie theater hanging up. So that that's uh, 23, uh, almost 24 inches by 36 inches. So um, this also comes with the digital art package. And if unlocked, and we'll talk about these, these, uh, mm -hmm. these uh, stretch goals, you will, you will choose an Order of Knights Radiant, and you will get goodies that are themed toward that Order of Knights yeah. Radiant. You'll get the physical actual rewards. You'll get the actual rewards of yep. this. So for example, you choose Windrunner as your order. You'll get one patch, one print, one pin, and one coin that are all themed toward Windrunner. So, um, and you'll get physical copies of any of the other unlocked rewards yep. that we'll talk about. Except for upgrades to uh, the leather yep, bound. Yep, except for up upgrades to the leather bound. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're not going to send you a slip case to the leather bound that you're not buying. Yeah. For instance. <laughs> um, and yeah. hopefully we've marked that really well for mm -hmm. you when, yep. when you look at it. But we will have a FAC um, once this launches, there will be a fact that comes along with the uh, yep. frequently asked questions that comes along with this that uh, um, you can go there and, and, and see some of this. So uh, tier three. Tier three. That so, This is the big one. This is the, uh, the one that the whole thing is kind of centered around. Yep. This is our main tier. Um, 200 bucks. You get a signed physical copy of the two volume set of the Way of Kings leather bound. You get... A bridge four poster you get the digital art package you get the orders of knights radiant stuff for your order for your order mm -hmm. um, and you get a physical copy of all other unlocked stretch goal rewards except um uh physical copies of the news uh, it doesn't include the novella at all right and it doesn't include a physical copy of uh, way of king's way prime. of king's prime yep. yep so this is like the if you're not interested in the novella just the leather bound, yeah. this is the package for you. And uh, for example, we will have add-ons. If you want to buy this tier, for example, and then add on an- um, Add on the book. The add on the book, yeah. yeah. We like, can do that. We, we considered having like a, um, like a middle one that had the novella and stuff. We're like, that doesn't make any sense, yeah. right? You're already getting all the, um, all the rewards. So if you want the novella, a copy of it, you buy this and then you add on a print copy of the novella and it'll come with the ebook of the yeah. novella and then you have that. Um, and that, what, what is that? Is that 20 bucks for the novella? Uh, it's 15. 15. So, yeah, right now yeah. we're, we're uh, still playing with the, the pricing on some of those yeah. add ons. So, 15 bucks and then you get the print novella as well. And then yeah. you get out on a print copy of, of, uh, of um, Way of Kings. Yeah. Prime. So, uh, one, one thing to, to note here is that the, uh, the book is signed. We've only signed volume one though, yeah. Because th that's just a that's a lot of signing that we've been doing. So yeah, um, come to come to a signing at some point, and you can get that second one signed. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, volume let's... one of the two volume Way of Kings. Yep. Not meaning that we wouldn't sign Words of Radiance when we do it. We right. Will sign Words. Yes, of we will. Yeah. It'll it'll likely be the same kind of deal. Mm-hmm. All right, tier four. This is our this is our last and, and biggest tier. Yep. Um, and it's going to be limited to 950 people mm -hmm. um, right now. Uh, so, and this is $500. However, you're going to get like $800 worth of stuff. 
Um, so this is the numbered one. So for everybody who wants the numbered book, we have these. Yep. It's signed, it's numbered. Again, the first volume of that two volume set is, is the one that's signed and numbered. Um, you get a physical copy of the Way of Kings Prime that we've talked about. We've uh, been designing this um, and we're gonna, if we do more of these sort of books yeah. in the future, they'll all look nice. We're calling on the shelf next to each other. We're calling them Sanderson Curiosities. Yep. Theoretically, our Stormlight Kickstarters will add on things like a copy of White Sand Prime. Right. Or a copy of Dragonsteel or these sorts of things mm -hmm. um, that are the books, those books I wrote before I got published, that are the ones that are still good, um, but, <laughs> uh, but we've never done anything with. If you want the ultimate curiosity, then having all of these unpublished books uh, on your shelf, you can get them this way. So these, uh, you'll, you'll see in the picture here, we're doing our best to give you an idea of what they look like, but these are all mock-ups. Um, the designs might change slightly from this, but right now the Way of Kings Prime, it, it doesn't have a dust jacket, but it has like a nice feeling um, material that's over the top of it that will be in black and it will have gold foil with probably just a symbol on the front, probably yep. the double I yep. symbol and then- Maybe um, the one I originally drew. It actually is. Is it? Yeah. It's a slightly You get my shape. art. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's been revamped a you little bit. You can compare but... my glyphs to Isaac. So we'll have my glyphs. You've um, got to put my glyphs on it. There's I'll have some... to see if we can do that. I'll, I'll make a note. Yeah. The uh, Brandon's glyphs. Brandon's bad glyphs drawn in MS Paint. However, Isaac will make them so it doesn't look like your book looks ugly. Yeah. Uh, but you'll be able to see my glyphs. I, I actually like the shape of your of your uh, double eye a little bit better than mine. Mm. We had to extend mine a little bit for different reasons. And, and yours by itself, without all the other things in there, has a nice shape to it. And so, yeah, we'll see if we can add those glyphs in there somewhere. Um, there is the bonus that in this book, Brandon did the map. I did the map. You get my map. Yeah. My actual MS Paint map. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I'm not touching it up much. Nope. It's pretty cool though. I mean, it's as far as author-made maps go. It's it's not bad. Mm. So, it's uh, it's pretty good. Um, so I don't. I, I, we've gone off on the tangent here. For those who don't anyway. know, I did all the symbols in Elantris too. So I, yeah. they're not terrible. They're not drawn like a four-year-old. I did the I did the Elantris symbols. They, we just leveled up once I was able to hire out art. Yeah. We, we've added some uh, Elantris mm -hmm. symbols since then too. Yes. So which has been mm -hmm. fun as well. Um, so that that way of King's Prime is going to look really cool. We've we've uh, we're, we're not we're not going on the cheap with this. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice hardcover book um, that hopefully we'll be able to continue the design for future things. Like if we do the white white sand prime, it will look very similar. Yep. Okay. So you get you get the leather bound book signed and numbered. You get the way of King's Prime. You get. Unsigned, thank you. Yes, the Way of Kings Prime is unsigned, um, as, as well as the Stormlight novella. We are not signing that one as, um, either. Um, so you get Way of Kings Prime, physical copy. You get the physical mini hardcover of the Stormlight novella along with the ebook. You get the Bridge 4 poster. You get the digital art package. And when it comes to the Orders of Knights Radiant stuff, you get all, all ten. ten. You're so, have so much swag. Ten patches, ten pins, ten prints, ten coins. Um, if you wear it all on a jacket or something, you're going to look like a scout of some kind. <laughs> it will be awesome. Roshar scouts. Roshar scouts. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, they, now someone's going to cosplay this with no, a band clear. Yeah, chicken scouts. Yeah, chicken scouts. <laughs> That's our, that's, our, that's our next t-shirt. Uh, chicken scouts? Oh no. What have I done? We have, we have to do the sash now for everybody to put the patches on. <laughs> now the, the patches are not the same size as merit badges. They're yeah. like, they're like yeah. three inches. They're pretty big. So you'll look awesome. So you'll look like yeah. an awesome chicken scout. <laughs> what, was Lyft ever an awesome chicken scout? <laughs> oh boy. Go oh boy, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, in addition to that, uh, we'll get to the other physical copies of the other stretch goal rewards, which includes yeah. the the upgrades to the. Uh, yeah, let's do the stretch goals now, and then we can like ask for questions and yeah. stuff. What yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, let's talk really oh, quick yeah. about the orders of knights radio okay, because yeah. that feeds into the, the stretch point. goals. Mm -hmm. So we released on the blog um, a little while ago, like I don't know, a week and a half ago, the uh, stormlight quiz, the knights radiant quiz. So you. 
if you don't know what order of Knights Radiant to pick for the goodies that you're getting, um, then uh, you can go take this quiz. Mm -hmm. um, see if your results match what, what you think you are. And you can read through. We also have a link there that you can read through all of them if you want. Yeah. If you don't know what you want to be, pick your favorite color, pick your favorite glyph. Um, th this isn't... Yeah, you don't have to take the quiz yeah. and only be that person. We just did it because yeah. we thought people might have fun with yeah. that um works and there's like, a there's a lot of works like the sorting hat you yeah well your yeah. desires come your play. desires come very much into play yeah so um, you, you can look and see we at the very end of the quiz we've tried to make it easy to take and quick to take at the very end you get a graph of percentages of how closely you matched our perceptions mm -hmm. of the the different orders and oftentimes you might be clumped really closely around a few different mm -hmm. orders just just pick your favorite. Yeah. But this is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. One of the um, uh, people in the chat wants you to make uh, one of the stretch goals a chicken scout wallpaper. <laughs> so, okay. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll make a note of that. Chicken scout wallpaper. If you get through all of our other stretch goals, <laughs> we will make a chicken scout wallpaper. Is that it? Can, can, we, <laughs> yeah. can we promise to that? One? Yeah. 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 I, we can we promise that. We absolutely promise that we will do that. We'll actually, yeah. Um, <laughs> cool. we, we will do that. Goal number 11. And uh, with the... Maybe we should call it the Rainbow Chicken Scouts because they're rainbow chickens. Yeah, that's right. Rainbow mm -hmm. Chicken Scouts. Can Joe will be the model? Yeah, yes. something like that. The uh, the Jungle Chicken Scouts. The uh, We'll find some we'll sort find of thing something. that works. Um, th yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we'll need to get Kronk to, uh, yep. yeah. to be our, mm -hmm. spo our spokesperson. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, stretch goals. Um, the first one we don't have a picture for. Um, because it's still being worked on, but the first stretch goal um, will be now stretch goals. For those of you who don't know, once there's a certain amount of money that once we hit that goal, the Kickstarter has been funded. That means that we are going to go forward with making all of this stuff and sending it to you. Yep. Um, stretch goals mean we have to unlock them. So beyond the original funding amount, if we hit the next funding amount, we unlock another thing and so our first first stretch goal to unlock will be um six by nine sticker sheets so six by nine is about the same size as your normal hardcover so these are pretty big and they'll have six to eight stickers on them that you can pull off and it's themed toward your order of knights radiant for example um the windrunner one has a couple of different sizes of the windrunner glyphs so you can put one on your computer put one on your um laptop or your phone um and also it's got the saying of the, the order, like, I will protect as a sticker, and it has mm -hmm. the name written in that cool font that we've, that I, we've I went over these today with Isaac. Ben McSweeney's been doing them. Yeah. They are great. Yeah. He's also uh, in the chat. He's in the chat. Yeah. Ben, loved your, uh, loved your things. We're, we're basically doing, like, um, there's going to be, like, the full-size character, but did you mm -hmm. mention the chibi? I haven't mentioned yeah. the chibi there's yet. There's basically going to be, like, a, a more serious-looking sticker but then some other character chibi yeah that's not necessarily of the, of the order but but uh related to them like there's a little chibi wit uh for the edge dancer <laughs> uh for the um the else caller the yeah. one where you've got you know a nice sticker of yasna and then a little chibi wit next there yeah. that is just so cute um the the way we're approaching these yeah. is we we thought you know a Stormlight Anime would be really cool. Yeah. And so we're kind of treating it like that. Stormlight Anime, these stickers are going to be in that feel. So the first one is Windrunner Kaladin in an anime style. Yep. And uh, Ben, since you're watching, get ready to be drawing a chicken scout at some point. Yes, you will have to be drawing <laughs> us a chicken scout. To more than that, because Scott from Facebook gave us the order of the, the scouts on Roshar, and it's Chicken Scout, Kremlin, <laughs> Sky Eel, Axe Hound, and Chasm Fiend. Those oh, your scouting, the scouting ranks. Scouting ranks, which, right. Okay. Yeah, I think it's pretty yeah, fun. That's a pretty, yeah. That's a pretty good scouting rank. We need right a good there. word to go in front of it. I don't want to appropriate the LGBTQ symbol. Right. Um, yeah. And so we maybe want to stay away, but we want to be like, there's got to be some sort of um, adjective mm -hmm. uh, to really make it work. Um, so if you have suggestions in the chat, um, that might. Yeah. Yes. You may have to be doing a, 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 a version of Magellan um, um, from Roshar. Um, 
Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. You people are weird. It, this is a thing. We are weird too, though. I guess we suggest you. <laughs> yeah. We suggest not this their is fault. Why you it's don't, our fault. This is why you don't bring Scouts. Isaac on the the chat. What's right? that? Storm Scouts is what someone said. Uh, well, yeah. That's so serious, though, and this is such a goofy thing. <laughs> um, but it is a good. It, it is at least alliterative. Yeah. Go, let's do the let's do the stretch goals. Yeah, stretch goals. So first mm-hmm. one is um, the uh, six by nine sticker sheet yep. by Ben McSweeney. They're looking awesome, and um, we will be showing more of those as, yeah. as, as we get closer. And when you get your digital art package, if you don't do this, you'll still get a digital version of those. You can print yeah. your own stickers. Like we are totally okay with you using that art to make your own little things uh, for um, yourself. Yep. For yourself. Yep. Um, Isaac, do you want to uh, move Grab that you. over yep. and get me with another one? Thanks. So yeah, love those. All right, so the, the, the second one, we don't have a picture for this um, either. We do, it's just not a very exciting picture. It's a close-up of the leather. <laughs> yes. um, so, um, and it, it's an actual picture of the leather. Um, did our best to, to get that so you know kind of what the texture will be like. Um, but we will upgrade the, um, the books to genuine Italian leather rather than just the bonded leather. So far we've done everything in bonded leather. It's been, um, they, it's they've been, they've they been great. great. They've been great. Uh, for the Way of Kings and for the yeah. Stormlight Archive, we want to do the, this to, to go up to a genuine leather. What we heard from collectors is that was one level up that they yeah. uh, they thought would um, just make it even a little bit nicer. And we weren't sure we could do it unless we have this whole thing mm-hmm. going on where we've got the bulk sales and we know we can order enough and yeah yeah so we can't guarantee that upgrade later for future yeah future, future. reprints we will try but we can't guarantee that yeah um and if future reprints we will we will have this on the store for sale for those yeah. who can't afford it right now yeah what we can't guarantee is it'll be um that it'll be genuine leather yeah it'll be the bonded leather. Or, or and for our vegan fans you totally can buy the Digital package at ten dollars, and then add on stickers and things. Yep. Um, if the idea of a leather bound book is um, is upsetting to you, we got gotcha. you. You can you can do this without having to buy the leather. Yep. And we we've uh, that's something that we have a lot of people have approached us about this, and mm-hmm. we we are thoughtfully considering these yeah. things. There's a lot of things in play. We've been asked if we can print yeah. ones that aren't actual leather. Yeah. Um, that's been really hard to figure out. It's still possible that we will that we will do a non leather bound set of these. We might have to see all the people who want it and do a special print run and say, all right, if you want the fake leather so you so it's you know it's vegan yeah. or whatever. I don't even know our books vegan. Well, cruelty free. Cruelty, cruelty free. free. There you yeah, go. There's exactly. a good way to pray, phrase it. Uh, cruelty free. If that's something to you, it's on our radar. It's something we would like to do in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, we, we would need to get a group of you together. Just kind of, we would just get you on a mailing list and then have you all kind of buy into yeah. it or something and do a printing. Yeah, or we've talked. We've talked about several different different ways, yeah. but but that is years away. Yeah, if we it's would do years that. away. And mm-hmm. also, we have to look at contracts and see if yeah. that's something we're allowed to do. Yeah, we so might not be. We might not be. Mm-hmm. Um, so we will upgrade the book to Italian leather. That's goal number two. Goal number three is the, the order patch, which we do have a picture of. This is, uh, again, a mock-up of it. And uh, I, I've done mock-ups of all the patches now mm-hmm. with all the different the colors that we have. And um, we will release more of those as I get those get Yeah, closer. the patches look great. Um, I've been very pleased with how those are looking. There was a funny comment. Someone said that uh, the books are not cruelty-free because you do horrible things to Kaladin. I do. That's true. <laughs> None of my books can ever be considered cruelty-free. Oh, poor Kaladin. Okay, so uh, goal number four. This is... Um, so what we're doing is every other mm-hmm. goal has um, has to do with your order of Knight's Radiance. So the, the first one was the sticker. Then we upgrade to Italian leather. Number three is the order patch. Then the next one is we're going to upgrade the leather bound again to a custom slip case. This is it's made out of a cloth, cloth bound with the blue foil symbol of the Stormlight Archive, the uh, the original symbol, um, and the inside has a blue flocking in it, so it's soft and the books will go in nicely. Um, so that that's uh, that's kind of what we've spec'd out for that. If we get to uh, goal number four, 
and those will look really nice on the shelf. Again, the slipcase is something we can't guarantee after the Kickstarter. Um, goal number five, again, we're back to the orders. This is in um, order art print. We have commissioned Steve Argyle, who has done some art for us in the past, to do a picture, uh, to do an illustration of each order of Knights Radiant. The one that's on there right now is the Skybreakers. Eventually, it will be Windrunner, just because our yeah everything everything is going to be Windrunner on this this uh, campaign as far as the example image goes. Um, they will be nine by twelve, um, which is a nice size. Um, I think I looked it up to try to make sure that it will fit in um, normal frames. I'll have to check that again. But nine nine by twelve is what we came up with. Um, and these are really awesome. Steve is doing a great job on it. He's and you'll be able to see all of these. Yeah. Like we're going to use these in the, the um, is it the description or just the blog post where we will have all of these yeah. next to the order when you're choosing your order, right? When, when they're done, yeah. When we'll, they're done. I'll yeah. add them in, to, in appropriate places. Yeah. So. so you should be able to see all of these. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So... We will, every, everything, all the different things of the different orders, we will have a place where you can go and look at them and, and see what they look like so that you're not completely surprised by what comes in the mail after you. Yeah. Um, so the next thing after that, goal number six, is a backer pin. Um, it's, it's going to be fairly large. It's two inches wide by uh, one, one, one and a half, 1 1.4 yeah. inches tall. Um, and this is of the the double eye of the Almighty, and it's actually based on uh, Brandon's one from the Way of Kings Prime, which is part of what makes this one exclusive. It has all of the the colors of the different orders of Knights Radiant, and it's hard enamel, which evidently pin collectors really like these hard enamel pins. It's a bit of a, an upgrade from the soft enamel, which looks a little more embossed, which sometimes you want that look. Um, but it, it's very smooth across the top. So that, that's kind of what we're looking at there for the, uh, the backer pin. Um, and this will be exclusive, I think. I'm not sure yeah. that uh, we will yeah, sell this ever again. Yeah. Exclusive. yeah. All, right. All right, then we go to the order pin. So um, this is uh, a one inch pin. Brandon's been giving out similar ones like this at, at different signings when people come cosplaying. Mm -hmm. um, these, uh, to distinguish them from that, they have a different look to them. Some of them will be debossed rather than embossed if it makes sense and they'll have different, um, uh, the, the, the color will be, coloring will be a little bit different. So um, that's pretty cool. Goal number eight is um, playing cards. These are, are by Rebecca Swords Jensen, who um, did some art for us in the past. She did the uh, Knights Radiant poster that we, we did, and uh, uh, she's been really making awesome cards with these. You can see it in these the image there are a little fantastic. bit. Um, but uh, yeah, they're going to be really cool. And she's, she's really killing it with this, really making nice cards. Um, goal number nine will be a challenge coin in your order. And these will have on the front the symbol of your order plus uh, the name of the order and the um, kind of the core theme. concept. Yeah. yeah, the core concept. So uh, I will protect for Windrunner. I will seek justice for Skybreaker. That that sort of thing. And on the back, it's got around the outside. It's got the uh, first oath of the first ideal of the Knights Radiant around the outside. And in the middle, it's got the uh, the face the Oh yeah, corresponds with your order. Um, the herald face. The herald face from uh, the, the from the archways, from the archways that are at the beginning of the books. Yep. So th those will be uh, those mm -hmm. will be cool. And then we get to my favorite. Yes, the one that I uh, I insisted <laughs> be done. So uh, we have our last last stretch goal. Last stretch goal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right before the chicken scout stretch goal. <laughs> yes, if we do have to do a chicken scout stretch goal, then um, is the wit or witless coin. So uh, we have the, the, the picture of that there. We've got the uh, unofficial 11th Herald, which is wit. Um, one can have a wit, and then you turn it over on the back, and it says, but you can't have a witless. And we will leave a surprise as to what is going to be on the back of this coin. But um, this one is going to be really cool. I'm, I'm excited for that one as well. So the, those are our stretch goals. Now we've talked a little bit about add-ons. 
Mm -hmm. And add-ons are basically once you have pledged to the Kickstarter, you have access to add-ons. And that, that means that, for example, you um, do the $10, get the ebook, um, but you also want the wit or witless coin. Mm -hmm. You can just add that on. Yeah. And then we will uh, we'll add that to your order. And these don't, uh, we think, uh, it won't have to be unlocked. It's just like... If you want to add that on right at the beginning, uh, we are going to print some of these. We just don't know how many, and mm -hmm. we don't know like and things like that. And like the playing cards will probably be available on our store eventually for sale. So we're going to have these things. So you could just add them on right now uh, to the thing. Um, we are hoping that we will get all the stretch goals unlocked. So if you're buying something that comes with all these stretch goals, you may want to wait to see how many unlock before you add anything else on right. um, that you will get for free. But um, Oh, yeah. we we have my bro my we have a special guest, Kara. Okay, okay. Is that my is that our special guest? Yes. Oh, my special guest. All right, we're interrupting. <laughs> this very important stuff for the fact that Do I need to move? um that I I told Dallin he could bring his pet turtle because my pet uh, macaw is often um, on, and so he wanted to bring. Will you tell them about your your turtle? His name is Sheldon. Yeah. He's a baby cicada tortoise, the third... He eats cacti. He eats cacti, that's right. Cactus, cacti, whatever you want to call it. He is a baby cicada tortoise. He, he's, that means he's the third largest tortoise in the, whole, um, in the world. He's going to be eating our, mowing our lawn eventually, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except for turtles, don't eat roots. Mm. Don't eat roots. Uh, so His nickname is Bebe. Dallin, when he was six, asked us if, we have, if he could have a turtle. Turtles are his thing. He always has a turtle symbol for, for everything he does. He has all sorts of, he has stuffed turtles and things, and he wanted a real turtle. We told him when he was 10, he could have one. We just picked that out of the air. He kept us to it. <laughs> um, and we have an employee named Joe who has uh, some of these. And Joe came by and said, here's, here's my tortoises. And Dallin's like, I am going to have one of those. I must have one. And he was very responsible, and he kept asking. He's albinos. There's so, albinos. Um, so at age 10, we said he could have. Did you know there's children. albino tortoises? I didn't know that. There's well, albino I cicada tortoise. That's there's albino. They're probably and these really are cute. All um, uh, coloring pages of albino tortoise. Um, I mean, color pages of, of a cicada tortoise. And, and I went down, and I'm like, wait, that's they're, an albino tortoise. They're all alb albino because they're They have red eyes. They have red eyes. Well. Now you have shown him, you really wanted to show you guys. Say goodbye to everybody on YouTube and Facebook. Um, and it's time for him to go back and uh, put his turtle to bed. Um, but, yeah, he was really excited when he saw we were having pets. Um, and so, this one doesn't have a pet yet. For that reason. Yes. So, there you go. Uh, interrupted yeah. by my children. A couple of chicken scouts. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can you can add all of this stuff yeah. on, um, and we have some special things in the add-ons too, um, because what we were thinking when we we're brainstorming is like you know if I were buying this, I would buy it probably if I were you know a reader, I would want to buy it for me and my wife, and we would be in different orders, and so we wanted to have a thing where you could add on a sec, you could just buy all of the things. For a second order, mm -hmm. so it's like let's say you're a bondsmith and your your partner is you know a windrunner. You can just add on the windrunner one, and again, those don't have to unlock. They will just all come, whether we unlock them for free or not, um, and you'll just you'll just get them. Um, so if you have, or if you're like, you know what, I want to buy for my brothers-in-law stormlight playing cards for Christmas, you can just go add on five of those with whatever other thing you ha you're doing. Yeah. So uh, one thing to keep in mind is that. Let's say that you did get the leather bound, mm -hmm. which already comes with a yeah. pack of playing cards if it was unlocked. Unlocked, yeah. um, and then you buy for five of your brothers-in-law. Yeah, you would get six. You would get six. So this is all in addition to what is already laid out in your yeah. So in your tier, you can buy all ten patches just by themselves if you're a patch collector. Mm -hmm. You'll probably end up with eleven then. Because if you buy the anything that's got the print, the physical rewards, you're gonna get the one for the order you pick, and then you'll get a package of eleven. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just how it felt like we had to sell them. We have to package them all together in packs of ten, rather than nine missing the exact one that you have um, connected to. So just so you know, but if you want, you're like, I want all ten pins, but I don't want to spend five hundred dollars. 
then you can just order the 10 pins. Yep. Um, so so uh, some of the things that we have in there that I'll just go down kind of uh, mm -hmm. that you can buy separately is the Stormlight novella with yep. an ebook. Yep. Um, and I should mention this up front while we're working on pricing is a lot of these are going to be cheaper during the Kickstarter than they would yeah. be through the store mm -hmm. um, if, if we wind up being able to carry some of these things in the store later on. So we're trying to make this to be, be a deal through the Kickstarter. Um, so the Stormlight novella is a, and ebook is the first one of these add-ons. Uh, bridge 4 poster by Zach Stella, who is an yep. amazing artist. That's the Bridge 4 poster that yep. we have. You can just buy extra copies. You can buy extra copies. They are not getting folded. Um, yeah, we, we listened. We listened and we changed that. It looks so bad folded. You guys were right. <laughs> Um, if you missed it when I when I announced that we got him in, we're like, oh, glad thing, glad that we 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 thought to ask about this, that people asked about I'm it. I'm so glad about that mm -hmm. because not only that, we wouldn't want to send out a bunch of these folded ones and then people don't want to do anything with it. It just yeah. seemed like a waste of resources. Yeah. So we might as well do it in a way where people are mm -hmm. going to be able to use them and display them in uh, the way they want to. So uh, the Wave King's Prime hardcover. Yep, you can add that on. We can add. You can add that on. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing, the other things you can add on all have to do with the orders. You can add all ten sticker sheets, all ten patches as a pack, all ten art prints by Steve Argyle, all ten um, pins, all ten challenge coins, um, an extra wit kit coin, an extra wit coin, the playing cards, the backer pin will be available through here. And um, or you can do the order pack that Brandon mentioned, which comes with one of each of those five different order things. things. I think I said yeah. four earlier. Yeah, but it's I meant five. five. Sticker yeah. sheet, patch, print, pen, and coin. Yep. So yeah, I mean that that's that, that's that's our Kickstarter. Kickstarter. Yeah, I don't know if we want to go live the seventh. Ask a, have people yep. ask questions or ask any questions, anything you want to, to, to throw our direction. Um, I, maybe I can talk a bit about shipping really quickly. Okay. Just just kind of as a because we're going to get questions about about mm -hmm. shipping. Um, we don't ship completely worldwide yet. There are a few places. We, we try to establish ourselves in the, the country. We'd mm -hmm. be able to have a good... Um, no, know that the, the stuff that we're sending to you um, will make it there. We have to have good relationships with the, the different postal services and things like that. So if it's not listed there when the Kickstarter comes out, we're sorry. We're doing our best. Um, but shipping-wise... Um, we're going to have to ship these in different levels. Yeah, different bundles. Different okay. bundles. Part of this is because when we ship the leather bound book, it is going to become it's going to come directly to the bindery. Yep. The more we have to handle the books, the more likely things will be damaged. And so that that's one of the reasons why you've seen Brandon signing um, the first signature of the book here is because that cuts at, down on the books arriving damaged to you. Mm -hmm. We can shrink wrap them, fewer people handle them. And this is one more step. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come directly from the bindery. Yep, um, so you'll get that um, um, directly from them. Yep. Um, but we'll be shipping the posters, then which we are not folding. Yep. <laughs> um, and so we'll be shipping those to you. And part of the reason that's separate is mm -hmm. how do you ship a poster that's this long? Yeah rolled up you can't ship that with a book in any way that uh yeah but we ship them in triangle boxes we found that that's the best way to do it they don't roll off trucks mm -hmm. um, um and, and get run over by things as often um so that that will have to be shipped separately then your goodie bag will have to be shipped s separately and the the the, the hard covers you bought yeah and well, the hard covers those will probably be different from the goodie bags that we've determined kara except yep. for international except for international, international we'll do them together, we'll do them together. okay yeah and so this shipping will all be added on to what this price is, depending on where we're shipping them and what mm -hmm. add-ons you're buying and things like that. And we, we've, we've uh, considered this thoughtfully, mm. and this is how we've figured that we can do this. Yeah. We wanted to keep shipping down as much as possible, but the variety of goodies that are coming with this, just uh, to yeah. get them to you safely and in a timely manner, this is how we decided to do this. This is the cost for not folding the poster. Um, yeah. is that we have to have a separate shipping cost for the poster now. Because mm -hmm. um, they were going to be folded by the publisher and sent with your book. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. So, I we all apologize for that. And international ship shipping is a beast for a lot of this stuff. And yeah. we understand that. Again, that's something that we are 
approaching yeah. from different angles and thinking about we don't know what yeah. we can do yet but it's something oh, we're, we're, we're hoping about. maybe sometime we can find some independent booksellers in countries and su- send them freight boxes that are cheap to ship that they can have on their shelves to sell some of these leather bounds and things but that is just a rough it, it there's yeah they don't want to carry a hundred copies right which would what would bring the price down enough that so it just it gets rough books are heavy mm-hmm. um so and these yeah. especially so the oftentimes the nicer the paper the heavier the book too not always the case um but so, you could get yeah. as many as five different packages for this right um because the the, you could get an yeah. Edge Dancer. Would Edge Dancer and Way of Kings Prime ship separately or together in the same uh, bundle? Uh, they think? should, uh, if you're US, they'll go together. They'll go together. Okay, so you could get as many as four. The yeah. book, the poster, the goodies, and the uh, whatever hard, other hardcovers you buy. Yes. And part of that is the, the hardcovers, we just can't predict when they will be done. Yeah. Um, and so if you had to wait for your, your goodie bags already, mm-hmm. but you have to wait for the, uh, yeah. the, the books. Uh, again, the for, for international, we w- will wait and ship those at the same time because of the egre- yep. egregious cost um, for shipping internationally. All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. did any questions pop questions? up? That took a lot longer. We had, this is a big thing. I mean, <laughs> We've been working on this a long yeah. time. <laughs> uh, a lot of the questions have just been about uh, international stuff, so you yeah. kind of talk about We that. will list all the countries. It, I mean, yeah. the Kickstarter, yeah. If the, they've ordered from our store... Yeah, if you've ever ordered from us before, we do. You can look at what's on our store, and it'll be at least those countries yes. mm-hmm. that we ship to. There might be others, but at least those. So, uh, one question that comes in that might throw a wrench in or may not mm-hmm. be possible: they're wondering if they can opt out of the poster uh, for the shipping. Yeah, that's a that that is something hmm. we wondered about. Yeah. Um, We'd have to make a whole separate tier for that, and th- with Kickstarter, it just doesn't work very well mm-hmm. that. so, so if you didn't hear that no yeah that's that <laughs> is really tough um yeah. i mean um i guess it's the it yeah we can think about it it's unlikely um if you wanted to be like i just want the 200 hundred dollar leather bound don't send me anything else maybe we could make an option where you just email us and say don't send me this stuff yeah. uh you would it, you know uh, we could we could donate it to someone else or something. Maybe I'd have to, we'd have to talk about how difficult that would be. Um, if that's if that's something you don't want to do, um, maybe we can have an option that's under the shipping that's like, please don't send me with really big letters saying you really won't get any of the other stuff, um, and then we'll know. Um, they can also wait and get it from a bookstore. You can wait and get it from a bookstore, but they may want the slipcase oh, um, well, and yeah. things like that. Um, so, well, um, if we if we unlock the the slipcase, anything that we ship to the right. What I'm saying yeah. is, if they get it from a bookstore from, from in a year or from oh, us, yes, yeah, like yeah, who yeah. knows? Yeah. We will be working with partner bookstores yeah. that we have before. They will be getting boxes that have the leather bound with all the upgrades and some goodies, right? Yes, not all of them. Not all of them, but some goodies. Not yeah. the poster. And, and not the poster. Random orders of Night Raid. Ra- basically, you'll get a random order of Night Raid. Whatever we unlocked will yeah. be in there. You'll be able to go, because we don't want to cut our bookstore friends out. So they'll be getting boxes that are just like, a, here is a box. You don't know which order you're getting, but there'll be an order. There'll be pens. There'll be, you know, uh, most of the goodies, but not the poster um, that you could go buy uh, from, from, our, from our friends. Um, the places that we, you've been able to buy them for, from in the past. Um, and, and things like that. So you could do that and not get the poster. And, um, maybe we will have some lay, later on that we can sell just in those boxes, but we will talk about it. But I actually wondered about this. I wondered, is there, are there going to be people who just don't want any of the paraphernalia, uh, and they just want the leather bound? Um, and maybe what we could do is we could have an add on that is just the leather bound. We haven't even thought of that. So then they could, uh, they could. They could buy the ten dollar thing and okay. add on the, the leather bound and no other no other That's, goodies. Yeah. Maybe we'll think about that. Would yeah. that the person who asked that, what would you think about that? Um, then you're paying two hundred and ten dollars. So you're paying more to not get stuff, but you're not paying shipping for all the other stuff. I don't know. Yeah. That might be that might be weird. Um, yeah. We 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 could uh I knew this yeah. was going to ask, though. Yeah. Uh, you heard? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because there are people out there who just want to declutter, right? They're like, I'm not going to use any of this other stuff. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we can't make it cheaper for you because the buying the book is paying for all this stuff. 
Um, so it's not like we're gonna, but we could just sell you the $200 book perhaps without anything. Uh, we'll, we'll see about it. We'll, we'll think about it. Let us know how many of you watching would want to just pay the $200 and the shipping for the book and then get no paraphernalia to clutter your house. Let me know if this is just like one or two people or if there's a significant number of you who are um, in the kind of Marie Kondo, let's only buy what we need. Um, uh, yes, what, what <laughs> sparks joy sort of thing. Um, one, another question um, from Joshua. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, will there be a physical release for Way of Kings Prime post Kickstarter for those who cannot afford the $500 level yeah. or might not be one of the 950 Right. Um, so you can add it on mm -hmm. right now um, to the $10 tier. Um, that's, Isaac, do you think we're going to have, are we going to have the Sanderson Curiosities? Is this something you want to keep in print, Kara? Um, this is something that we'll probably have to discuss a little yeah. bit more. But it I would, could go it, ahead. It, it could go either way. I'd say 50 50. Yeah. I mean, an, another option would be something like with future Kickstarters, is when we, we uh, yeah. reprint them, basically, yeah, it's because it, it tells yeah. us how many that we need to print. Yeah. Like, um, it's really, we're not certain how well something like this will sell. It's a fun curiosity, um, but it is. It's different, so it's not uh, strictly worse, but it's just a worse version of Wave Kings, right? Yeah. Like, not strictly worse, because if you really want to see Renarin create the diagram, and you want to see how the things I was writing turned into um, the book that you have, um, but, you know, how many, how many Sander fans are there out there who really want to read the early books? We have no idea. It might be most of you. It might be a small number of you. Yeah. Um, even... I mean, if you're here today, you're probably an already in a self-selecting crowd of people who are more likely to want to read that. But um, and, and one thing to keep in mm -hmm. mind with Way of Kings Prime is that it is the book that you wrote um, right before Mist Right before Mistborn. Yeah. So, yeah, the story you've... I won't tell at long length yeah. because you guys have heard it before. But it was the book where after I was convinced I would not ever have a career and I was close to giving up and I said, no, I'm doing this for me, that I went and wrote the book for me, that I didn't care about what the market would care, that's Way of King's Prime. Um, it's the book where I tried really hard to do a lot of different plot lines and uh, just was not able to juggle all of the plot lines. It doesn't feel bad. It's not like I, I did a poor job with any of them. I just only started most of them, if that makes sense. You, it feels like not a complete story for, uh, for anyone except probably Yasna. Yasna's story feels pretty complete, at least book one style complete. Um, and after that, Marin probably is next complete. But, you know, some of these, like, it's like just glimpses. Um, so it's still very readable. So I haven't read it since 2003. <laughs> so you had to read it for this. Or parts of it. Parts of it. Yeah. Christy read the whole thing. Yeah, Christy uh, read Christy, the whole we, thing. We and... did put it through a copy edit. Uh, um, so we did do that. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, otherwise we didn't change big things for the most part. Um, yeah. The, uh, I mean, some people said that they would be interested in the book only option, but yeah. I mean, it's maybe we need to do a poll. Yeah, maybe we need to do that. Or, I mean, I feel like the easiest thing to do would be to add on a, um, a shipping option that is please don't ship me any of the other paraphernalia, find a good home for it within big letters, this means you will only get the book. Yeah. Um, Some people said that they want the goodies, but they the poster with the extra shipping was yeah. something they would rather not have. Right. I think it's got to be an all or nothing, all or nothing. for those. Like, yeah. It's just going to be... Get off the tears. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be too hard. It's, yeah, basically... We can't get it perfect for everyone. Yeah, we, I, I, there, yeah. we're closer on this than we would be selling it on our website. If we did it on our website, it would be an all or one. Uh, all or one. We'd just have the $200 tier. Um, yeah. And Gary it would come with what we decided to print that we thought uh, we could afford, not knowing how many copies we were going to be printing. Yeah, now, there is an option to leave the... Uh, some, sometimes on Kickstarter, that mm -hmm. first tier is actually just a, hey... Donate here, and if you donate, yeah. then you have access to add-ons. So that's yeah. Um, Maybe we need to put a one dollar yeah. uh, if you just want to buy add-ons, and then put on a a leather bound, and then you can just build your own. Build your uh, own. The thing. problem, my worry about that is, and we can do that for you. Let us know if you want us to. Then you'd be paying, um, like if you're like, oh, I want to get the goodie pack. Like the goodie pack is, you you be you be you're going to be paying a way more probably than you would even for the shipping. That's. Probably right? true, yeah. Um, like, if you're like, I don't want the poster, but I want the goodie pack, 
I'm gonna go on and do that. I think you will end up paying more, way more than even if you count the shipping. Um, because the goodie packs are kind of expensive. Like the stuff that we're doing for free on the main one, uh, we're taking kind of a hit on. Yeah. Um, and so I don't remember, but our pricing it's, on this is gonna be like- You're getting, if, if we unlock everything, yeah. you're getting like $65 yeah. of free stuff. Right. So that's it's gonna be. That's just the order stuff. That's just that's just the, that's the, just the, the order stuff. That yeah. doesn't include the poster. That doesn't stuff. include yeah. all these other things. So. so, yeah, it's. Um, so I feel like you would be like, wow, I have to spend three dollars for the poster. I'll just order this. Then you're ending. You're spending two hundred and fifty dollars instead of two hundred. And yeah, like that, you're not yeah. getting a poster. But um, and and this just doesn't work for. Yeah, we would. Yeah. <laughs> I think the only thing we could offer is a way to buy only the book and get no paraphernalia for the same price as getting all the paraphernalia but not paying the shipping on all of that other stuff. That I think we could do. Right. If you're interested in that, let us know. Anything else where it's like, oh, I want the pin but not the patch, we just can't do that. Um, um, uh, it's it's got to be kind of an all or nothing, I think. Yeah. Um, so those who would be interested, let us know in the comments how many of you there would be. Um, and... Um, it feels like, yeah, either a $1 and then buy add-ons. Because I could see there be p being people who are just like, I just want to buy the playing cards. I don't want to spend yeah. $10 on the, uh, on the thing. And then we add on the leather bound um, that doesn't come with anything. That does seem like a pretty easy way. Yeah. We'll, we'll chat about it internally. We'll decide. Uh, no guarantees we'll even do this. Um, but, yeah. But this is good feedback. Mm -hmm. This helps us know what people want. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen too many Great. other questions. That's good. It's 8.50. Yep, so let's do uh, let's do uh, another question or two, and we'll say goodbye to Isaac. Okay. Um, uh, we'll oh. probably do all this stuff next. Oh, that oh, thing. Let's do those ones. Let's yeah. do this. Let me sign this back stack, and then we'll do okay, that. Cool. Um, and then... Um, am I, am I yeah. good to go, then? You are good to go. Okay. Um, we have some T-shirts and stuff that we'll show off eventually, but... Um, but I'll get that one in a second. We there's some things. There's another thing I need to sign uh, for one of our artists. But let's do a few more questions, and I'll finish this stack, and then we'll do that little stack, and then we'll be done. Um, question from David. Yeah. I need to get the microphone so people can hear me since hmm. it's not here. Um, David says, "How intertwined are the two halves of the Stormlight Archive?" Will you need to read the first half to know what's happening in the second half? If you read the first half, will you need to read the second half to get that sense that the story has come to an end? Um, I would say... Um, I've never done something like this before. They are less intertwined than, say, Mistborn 2 and 3, but maybe equivalently intertwined to Mistborn as Mistborn is intertwined to Mistborn 2 and 3, if that makes sense. Um, it depends, maybe even a little less than that, actually. Um, I think that you are going to want to view them as one big series of 10 books, and we are going to come to an ending, um, and it's, you know, there will be some very satisfying things about it, um, but it's definitely going to be a promise that there is more to come. I, I've never done anything, uh, quite like this, uh, less... Uh, less final than Mistborn 3, um, certainly. Um, so, I don't know. Um, I didn't think anyone would read the Wax and Wayne books without reading the, the first ones, but I get emails all the time from people who started with those because those are the ones that appealed to them. I think you could start with book six of the Stormlight Archive, and, and it wouldn't feel strange. I think it would be harder to stop with book five if that makes sense, of those two options. Um, but um, it's all gonna depend on, uh, you know, on your personal preferences and things like that. It's an excellent question. Plus I haven't written the, la the, the fifth book yet and that's gonna inform a lot. Like these things change and morph as I'm going, every one of them does. So who, who knows, right? Uh, I can explain better after book five is done. Um, Jarrett uh, says, how often do you refer to your outline when writing? Is it something you always have open next to you, or is it only something you go back to when you need it? Uh, I always have it open next to me. Um, I'm referencing it basically um, before each day's work, that's when I'm looking at it. Uh, I'm not referencing it constantly while writing, but frequently. 
Um, because I'm like, what am I doing in this chapter? I need to achieve this, I need to achieve this. How does this fit in here? Um, this is why, um, basically I have a thing called a floating outline. That's the one I'm talking about. The floating outline is where I've outlined in detail the next few chapters and what needs to occur. And that has come from the, the general outline. And the floating outline is more free form, um, and, but it, it's bullet points of what needs to happen in the next chapters. Uh, Amrita says, what are your opinions about separating art from the artist? Um, I go back and forth, honestly. Um, like, I think it is necessary to an extent um, because once a piece of art is written, it's like a picture in time. Um, and it's, it's like you do need to, I, need is the wrong term. This is all personal, right? What does a person do? Do I dissociate it from the author? I do to an extent. Like I still read um, H.P. Lovecraft. Um, and I have read the things that H.P. Lovecraft wrote in letters. Um, and the man was a horrible racist, right? Like not just the, it was the early 1900s racist. I mean, yeah, um, Lovecraft, and I still will read Lovecraft, and I will, but I don't completely divorce it from what I know of Lovecraft right now. I'm like, this is even more interesting to me, knowing how afraid he was of people who were different from himself, and afraid, like, Lovecraft stories, maybe it's reading too much into it, I don't think so, but maybe being about discovering you have a terrible heritage, um, like, is a very big part of a Lovecraft's things. And I'm a, the type, because as being a writer, I can look at that and be like, wow, this is really interesting. Um, but I don't blame anyone who's like, I just cannot read Lovecraft knowing the things that he's written. Um, like, can you ever read Mein Kampf now and not be like, this is the embodiment of evil as a human being, um, you know, made, made in, uh, into human form. So... I wa this is weird thing in between. For me, I don't, but I do both at the same time. Um, it changes my reading of the text, but does not stop me from reading the text. How about that? In most cases, um, you know, doesn't doesn't change my love for uh, for Sherlock Holmes. The fact that he was way off on LDS people um, in uh, Sign of Four or whatever. Um, but, you know, the guy's off in England. He has never met an LDS person in his life. Um, and uh, so it does change my reading of it, though. So um, does that, that makes sense? Uh, let me grab this thing over here. Uh, what do you want this signed in, Kara? Do you want it signed in Sharpie? Yeah, Sharpie will be fine. Yep. Um, right across the middle of it on the bottom? I was, I was thinking right there? Okay, sounds think? good. That sounds great. Cool. I'm going to kill this Sharpie and get a new one. Um, so... Uh, one of our favorite artists around here is uh, Gian Guo, whose name I'm probably saying right. I'm sorry, Gian. Uh, uh, we tried to look up how to say it, uh, and we could not find uh, it. But um, he does all of the Chinese covers of my books, which are gorgeous. You guys really should go look at his deviant art um, because he does these stained glass window interpretations of things. I have it originally discovered him off of his Hobbit um painting that he'd done years and years ago, um, which I actually have commissioned as a stained glass window uh, for my house because it is so pretty. I'll show you guys that when we, when we get it, um, uh, with his permission, by the way. Um, and so we have a new Knight's Radiant uh, poster that we commissioned um, from Gian um, that just uses his his beautiful art style, which we love. Uh, he did the, uh, the chapter headings in the Warbreaker Leatherbound for us. Um, the drop caps, I guess, is what they are. We've got some new stuff in the, in the way of King's Leather Bound that we haven't revealed yet, but that he did um, that are just gorgeous. And I'm actually signing these for him. Uh, he wanted a few copies of this poster. Uh, we're also going to give away three of them to you guys uh, as a thank you for hanging out through this whole stream. Um, and so I'm going to be signing those now. We're going to, Adam's going to give away three of those. Yes. Um, and he will tell you how to do that as I am signing these. But man, this guy is so good. So different and so beautiful. You know, why don't we make this simple and do it similar to what we did last time. If you email contest at brandonsanderson.com, 
I will pick three lucky winners. Okay. And Contest at BrandonSanderson.com. Don't just reply to the newsletter email. Correct. Um, because that will get you in the wrong folder. We have to be able to auto sort these folders. So if you email us in the next two days. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll pick a winner on Monday. Yeah. Eventually, we'll have a program running on like Facebook or on uh, on YouTube where you can just say, pick a person who's commented in the comment thread and we'll we'll pick you and then direct message you yeah, somehow so or something. We'll, we'll figure out how to do that eventually. Yeah, no, I haven't done. I just what, didn't able to get it set up today yeah. because I'm busy with the Kickstarter. Yep, so we, so, will, we will eventually do contests in, a, in an easier way, but right now you need to email contest yeah. at brandonsanderson.com. And if you do a subject like poster... Yeah, that would be good. Poster, Poster. and emailed contest. But basically, at anybody e who e emails us between now and exactly forty-eight hours from now uh, to that email, we'll just lump you all in, and we'll uh, we'll pick uh, three people randomly, uh, and we'll send you one of these beautiful posters. Uh, are these going to be for sale at some point or something? Yeah, they're oh, they're on the they're on the website right now. Great. If yeah. you're if you're interested in some uh, stained glass window uh, stormlight stuff, then uh, head over to the store. Uh, Thank you, guys. Uh, do I have to come back next week to sign? Is that what we decided? Nope. That, okay. Well, actually, yes, you yeah. are coming next week. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be an exclusive stream for people who pre-order Dark One. Oh, that's the Dark so One pre-order stream. if you go pre-order Dark One from uh, Vault's web store, yeah. uh, we'll send you a link that's on how to get access. That's the graphic novel. The graphic novel. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there we will be doing that. Um, and then in two weeks, we'll be back here signing more of these for tour. Um, hopefully we got through around 2,000 of them. Thank you guys, as always, for keeping me entertained while I have to sign piles and piles and piles and piles of things. Um, and we will see you next time.